Hey everyone, and welcome back. In the last lesson, your assignment was to sign up for a free NNN Cloud account. I hope that went smoothly for you. If you did run into any trouble at all, please don't hesitate to ask for help in our Discord group. That's exactly what it's there for. Uh, link is in the description. But today, we're finally opening the doors into our new digital workshop. The goal of this video is to give you a complete tour of the NNN Editor UI but we're not just gonna point at buttons. We're going to use first principles to understand why the interface is designed this way and what problems each component solves. So when you first create an account on NNN, the first page that you'll be greeted with is the overview tab right here. And breaking down this page at the top, you have some stats here. These stats pertain to your workflows. So when you finally create a workflow and you're running them, they will throw off certain numbers and statistics and you can find them here. For example, executions, failed executions, failure rate, time saved, runtime, that sort of thing. As you can see, all our stats are zero at the moment because we haven't created any workflows. We can do so by clicking this button here, but we're just gonna leave that for now. And you have tabs here on this page, you have workflows, credentials, and executions. As you guessed, probably guessed, uh, workflows will just list out all the workflows that you've created um, here. Uh, credentials, and uh, now this is an, an important concept. You can think of credentials as digital keychain of sorts. So instead of having to type your password into every app that you use in your workflow, you can connect the app to NNN apps like Gmail or Airtable once, and NNN will securely manage that connection securely, which means that you don't have to keep typing your password again and again. And executions simply, it, it's pretty much a logbook. It'll show a history of all your workflows and executions um, historically from past to present. You'll have stats, for example, workflow status started, runtime, and execution ID. You can use this section to try and debug any errors that you're facing in your workflow. And now moving down this list here, again, you have personal. So any, any workflows that you've created for yourself in your personal account will show up here. Again, you have credentials and executions. You also have this shared with you tab. Once a workflow is shared with you, it'll show up here. And you can also create projects within NNN here. And again, you have credentials, executions, any settings for the projects that you might wanna include, for example, the icon and name, project members, that sort of thing. Uh, you also have the admin panel. Uh, if you're on the cloud account and not self-hosting, this, this is what you'll see. And with the admin panel, you can manage your plan, usage, and other settings, sorry, for your NNN account. You do also have templates here just click on this. Now, this is a library of pre-built workflows from NNN and, all, and other builders in the space. Uh, I find them really helpful and fantastic, honestly, because they provide as a helpful starting point um, for building workflows that I, I use. And you have tons of different workflows and AI templates as well. Um, yeah, you don't have to reinvent the wheel often. Sometimes you can just find a workflow and then build upon it from there. So it's very useful. Do you want to check that out? So going back to the overview, I will now show you uh, probably one of the most important parts of the editor for NNN, and that's the workflow page. When you click create a workflow, you're taken to what's called the canvas and you can do various things uh, on the canvas. But first, let's just try and Let's talk a little bit about what the canvas is conceptually. So when you create a new workflow, this is where you'll land. It's called the canvas. It's the heart of NNN. Before visual tools like the canvas, building automations was not very visual. It would mean writing lines of code in a blank text file. And this limitation is very obvious. It's very abstract and hard to visualize the flow of your automation. The canvas solves this problem by giving you an infinite grid where you can lay out your processes and literally see how everything connects. Uh, you can drag, if you hold control on your keyboard, 
you can drag the canvas around. You can also zoom out and zoom in as well. So I would encourage you to do, to do that so they can get a feel for what it's like just moving the canvas around. At the top of the, the UI, you have, again, the personal. So this workflow that I've created will land in my personal tab. You can name your workflow. You can add a tag for your workflow as well. Uh, again, you have executions. Uh, right now, this workflow is inactive, but once I've built out the workflow, I can uh, activate it so it starts running. And I can also share the workflow with other people if I want to. I can also save the workflow. And if I just click these, this button here, you can duplicate the workflow, download it, rename, import other workflows, um, and also import from a URL or import a workflow from a file. Now, how exactly do I add a node <laughs> or add what we call a Lego block in our last lesson? Well, let's, let's show you how to do that. When you click this button here, it, it opens what's, what's called the node panel. You have a lot of nodes in Editor. I won't get too much into it right now. I just wanted to quickly show you where everything is. And then in your own time, you can have a proper dig around. So like I mentioned in my last lesson, each application, NNN is like a Lego block and it connects different Legos to build a workflow. But instead of calling it a Lego block, really it's called a node. And a node is an individual step in your workflow. It's an application. So for example, a Gmail node would be a Gmail Lego block. <laughs> and a node, like I said, is an ind individual step in your workflow and it performs a specific function like loading, processing, or sending data. You can add a node, like I mentioned, by clicking this add button here. And that opens up what's called the node panel, which is effectively your toolbox. It contains all the available nodes in NNN, and you can search for specific nodes as well. So let me just add a specific node. So let's add what we call the set node and you are presented with this scary looking screen, but don't worry, I'll break it down for you. So on the left-hand side is where you should start with. This is where data is inputted from. So think of data, the data flow for a node as flowing from left to right. So when a node, when a node is created, on the left-hand side, all the input data will, dis will be displayed here. Then in the center, this is where you configure the node. This is where you tell the node what you want it to do. Uh, we're not going to get too much into it this at the moment. I think it's best to just have a general idea of what each part of the node outlay does. So like I mentioned, this is where you configure the node. So you have parameters and then settings. And then on the right hand side, this is where you see the output data. So once you've processed the, the input data and of what you're choosing, then that data is an outputted on the right hand side. So this visual flow from left to right makes it incredibly easy to track what's happening to your data at every single step. So let's just go back to the canvas. As you can see, um, we've now added what's called a trigger node. Again, we'll get into this uh, in later on in the course, but each workflow is kicked off by a trigger node. That's how you start it. And a trigger node can be automatic or it can be manual. In this case, it is uh, manual. So this workflow will be executed when I click execute workflow. So if I can check and show you how that works, as you can see, we just executed the workflow and it said it's, uh, it was successfully executed. So uh, that was, that's great. But obviously there's no data <laughs> at the moment. So nothing has happened really. Okay, great. Um, just want to also show you this part of the UI. This is called the ask assistant. It's in beta. And personally, when I create my workflows, I find it incredibly helpful because when you, you know, describe your problem to it, it actually genuinely helps. <laughs> Sometimes a lot of AI assistant tools aren't very good, but this one is honestly quite helpful. But like I'd mentioned in previous lessons, don't rely too much on AI, especially um, for learning concepts or research. Uh, especially project creation, sorry. Only, only, don't use AI for project creation, but for learning concepts, 
definitely okay to use it then, but don't overuse it, naturally speaking. Uh, great. Uh, just to close that. And that's pretty much the everything with respect to the UI for NNN. What I would recommend that you do for your assignment for this lesson is just to play around with it and just click every button. <laughs> it sounds a bit silly, but if you can click every button and just get familiar with where everything is, open every panel, add a node, right click, left click, delete. You can't break anything, just explore the workshop and really get familiar with the workspace because we're going to be in this workspace a lot. And I think that the best way to really get comfortable with NNN is just to click everything and get familiar with it. And as always, if you do have any questions or find a cool feature, <laughs> then pop into the Discord and share it with us. It's what it's there for. We're here to, to help learn together and help each other. But that's the end of the video. Thanks for watching. And in the next lesson, we'll dive a lot deeper into nodes themselves and talk about the different types of using. So I'll see you there.